we're going to have a look at setting up uh, UV Pass in Nuke. Uh, UV Pass is simply uh, a gradient that uh, gives you the UV data that is then projected onto uh, geometry and rendered um, so that you can then use a, a texture and reproject it on top of your model without having to re-render your CG or re-render the, the actual texture, which means that you can then interactively map uh, textures onto a model. This is useful if you want to bake in your UV information and, and animation and then use it later on or use it in a different software. For example, here we're going to be using it in uh, After Effects using a plugin, but we could also use it directly in Nuke. So a, li a little demonstration would be using the ST map. So the ST map is uh, the, the remapper, and uh, we're going to want to remap this uh, checkerboard onto this uh, simple uh, uh, UVs uh, square. Uh, this is created procedurally, which means that uh, whatever the resolution, it will always have the highest uh, pixel density possible. Uh, you won't have any pixelization. Uh, so here, if I use this to drive my uh, remapping, so I set it up to, to RGB. So what it's doing is actually using the data from the UVs here to project this grid. So if I transform this data, by, for example, scaling it down, you'll see that then here the grid is scaled down as well. Uh, now, if we use instead of having just a scale down, we, if we use uh, the rendered uh, UV map, you'll see that now the grid is uh, projected properly on um, Alan's face. So specifically for this project, uh, all we really need to do is uh, load each uh, geo in a nuke, one by one, ca one character by one character. Here is Alan. Here would be Gary. We don't have Gary at the moment. Here it's Neil. Here is Priya, etc. And then go through this scene, CG scene, where I'm just uh, using um, the UV map as a texture and rendering it. So using the camera provided. So this is uh, Alan's face with a UV map. So literally all we need is this UV gradient to be able to reproject the texture. Uh, there's a few caveats that are very important, such as we need to not have anti-aliasing on, because uh, if we have any pixel data that is actually not 100% accurate data, because here if you had uh, anti-aliasing, you would have half the positioning of the ear and half of the hair and that would break. So that means that we can't have any anti-aliasing here. And if we decide to reformat anything uh, for some reason, uh, you need to, to make sure that the reformat is in, um, it's the filter is set to impulse, which means that it's not gonna uh, create new, new pixels. Data is just gonna create little stairs and try and find the closest. Uh, that's pretty much it. So an example here would be the steps would be one, set up the, the length of the shot, the frame range of the shot. Two, go through each uh, asset and load each uh, animated uh, geometry, uh, making sure it's the right one here. So and then we can render 16-bit half float because we need 16-bit uh, uh, data so that the projection works and uh, with alpha so that uh, we can then uh, crop it because as you saw before uh, when we just remap it without the alpha it uh, it doesn't look right so we need to also uh, re, re pre multiply so here if I, if I show you what it does if I add anti aliasing you'll see that it breaks all the edges and that's something we don't want to have at all. So we're going to stay uh, on uh, none. And then the last bit here, the UV check is just a safety where I'm loading all the meshes at the same time and projecting the, the grid 
true CG so that we can compare that whatever we rendered matches whatever would have been rendered in CG uh, properly. So in this case, uh, I can put on aliasing so it's a bit nicer. And that's pretty much it.